Nantucket Lightship was the first evidence of the United States that shipping came encountered on its way into uh, the New York, the port of New York. It marked the entrance of the United States shipping lanes coming into the United States. It was also referred to as the Statue of Liberty of the Sea. My name is Bob Menino. I'm the president of the United States Lightship Museum. Our museum was established for the sole purpose of rescuing Nantucket Lightship LV-112. Um, we uh, had formed a 501c3 nonprofit, raised the money, and um, purchased or assumed ownership of the 112, uh, brought her back to our home port, original home port of Boston, and uh, our mission was to restore and preserve the lightship. Well, the Nantucket lightship undergoing a major restoration. The 50-foot floating lighthouse and museum has been moved from East Boston to the Fitzgerald shipyard in Chelsea. Crews will replace the 84-year-old steel hull frames and complete other maintenance work. Volunteers tell us it's important to help preserve the National Historic Landmark. There are a total of 179 lightships built in the United States. The total stations that were established were 116. The most lightships on station at one time were 56. That was in 1909. Lightships, uh, in the, they were they were built and they were anchored where it was impractical to build a permanent lighthouse structure. on station off of Nantucket Shoals from 1936 to 1975 when it was decommissioned. Um, it is the largest U.S. lightship ever built in the United States. It was stationed on the most treacherous and remote lightship station in the world and it also guided uh, commerce, into uh, oceanic commerce from Europe into, into the United States. A favorite pastime of crew members was to fish for sharks. Um, the uh, Nantucket Shoals, there are a lot of sharks out there, in addition to other marine life. And um, so when they did fish, they used to fish with hand lines and they used to catch up to 10 to 15 sharks a day, uh, which were, you know, well over 10 feet. And so we found the shark. We found a lot of the shark jaws because they used to keep them as trophies. Uh, and then you know they had other hobbies. Some did models and, and did crafts and so on. But uh, yeah, they they kept pretty busy. I mean, life on a light ship was it was a lot of work, a lot of maintenance, painting, uh, uh, doing uh, engine electronic equipment maintenance. So uh, they kept busy. Uh, the restoration process started and um, as a result of general, generous donors, private donors, individuals, corporations, private foundations, um, the City of Boston and also the National Park Service and other organizations were able to raise some money and uh, we've gotten to the point where we're almost uh, 70, the ship is almost 70 percent restored and uh, so to this day we still, our restoration continues. In addition to financial contributors, uh, one of the things that we, we are all, we, we do not have any employees, we're all volunteers, and we really depend on the efforts of volunteers, their time and, and commitment and dedication to wanting to help us out on the ship. And, um, and if it wasn't for the, for the people putting in their 
time, we, this, we couldn't exist. The East Boston community has embraced the ship really well. Uh, it's become a popular attraction. Um, we probably, there are probably a, close to two million people that uh, are introduced to the ship, um, mostly through uh, Boston Harbor tours. Um, many of the tour boats that go by the ship were as on their schedule and they, uh, they do a historic narration and explain some of the history as they're going by the ship. Plus we have visitors here that come on board and we, we host events, private events and uh, you know public events on the ship to introduce uh, people, uh, students and people of all ages to, to the ship. Our objective, final objective, is to complete the restoration of the ship so we can just get it into maintenance mode and uh, continue our educational programs. Uh, one of our main goals for education is uh, trying to uh, inspire and motivate young people to become interested in historic preservation. Uh, because uh, a lot of these historic sites, whether they are maritime sites or land-based sites, a lot of them are, are administered by older folks, such as myself, and uh, we're not going to be around forever. And so in order to keep these historic, important historic landmarks and places uh, preserved, uh, you need to have people to continue to administer them. And the only types of people who can do it are the younger folks that are growing up and, and uh, coming up into the world and uh, we really would like to see, try to uh, recruit as many of those people and become, and get them as um, inspired as, as much as possible in historic preservation.